Obadiah Stane first appeared in 1982's Iron Man number 163. Stane was created by Dennis O'Neill and Luke McDonnell. Stane had a rough childhood. He was born into poverty, and in Iron Man number 200, we learned that his father had a gambling addiction. This addiction took a turn for the worse when he played a game of Russian roulette, and unfortunately for Stane, he saw his father lose the game and lose his life right in front of him. This led to Stain dedicating his life to making sure he had an advantage over everyone. This included an incident where, in an attempt to win a chess match, he killed his opponent's dog in order to emotionally distract them enough in order to win the match. Stain first met Tony Stark when he was an adult while attempting to acquire Stark Enterprises from Tony. Stain attempted to gain the upper hand over Stark by using his agent, Chess Man, to attack James Rhodes, Moomji to seduce Stark and make him fall in love with her, all while Stain sought to block Stark International from completing various business deals. This ultimately led Stark down the path of alcoholism in the famous Demon in a Bottle storyline, which we discussed in the Iron Man episode. This resulted in Stain taking control of Stark Enterprises, which he renamed Stain International, and having James Rhodes take control of the Iron Man armor. The Ironmonger armor was created as a result of Stain purchasing Stark Enterprises, where he used leftover notes and blueprints from the Iron Man suit to build his Ironmonger Mark I suit. Similar to the MCU, Stain ultimately planned to mass produce the armor and sell it to the highest bidder. Stain was ultimately killed in Iron Man number 200, where Tony Stark beat his alcoholism and created a Silver Centurion armor in order to defeat Stain. While Stark used the armor to defeat Stain, he did not actually kill Stain. Following his defeat, Stain used a repulsor beam from the Ironmonger suit on himself. Obadiah Stain's last comic book appearance came in 2009's Incredible Hercules No. 131, where Amadeus Cho and Hercules spotted him in Tartarus. Obadiah was survived by his son, Ezekiel Stain, who we have not seen yet in the MCU. While it is unlikely, perhaps you may see him pop up in the Armor Wars story. The Ironmonger suit has also not been used by Stain exclusively. In Iron Man number 212, Simon Steele used Yigros Kralis to take control of the Ironmonger armor in order to battle Dominic Fortune. Stain does not possess any major physical powers, but has business intellect, holding an MBA, and is also a master strategist, specifically in the area of psychological warfare. The Ironmonger suit grants Stain superhuman strength, flight, repulsor beams, chest lasers, and other internal weapons. Obadiah Stane's first TV appearance came in 2008's Iron Man Armor Adventures. His son, Ezekiel Stane, appears in Marvel's Future Avengers, and Stane is also briefly seen in a flashback. In relation to his on-screen counterpart, the major difference between Stane in the comics and Stane in the MCU is his business relationship with Stark. Stane serves as a partner to Tony in the MCU, while in the comics he is forced a tossile takeover of the company. This dichotomy is an interesting one, as Stane was seen as sort of a father figure in the MCU, while in the comics he was seen as an enemy of Tony Stark from the very beginning. We also do not know if Stane's son, Ezekiel, is a character in the MCU. Keep that name in the back of your head, as with Armor Wars quickly approaching, expect to see a number of Iron Man villains return. And there is a chance, albeit a minor one, that we might see Stane's legacy continue through his son. While Stane is a relatively minor villain in both the MCU and the comics, no one can deny the fact that he was the MCU's first big baddie, who set the stage for the rest of the villains throughout the history of the MCU. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy this deep dive into the history of Iron Monger. We're going through some Iron Man villains now. Expect the next two episodes to also be related to Iron Man villains. But I think it's interesting, again, to see all the differences between the MCU versions of these characters and the comic book versions of these characters. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm enjoying making these videos. I think they're nice, short videos that you can digest really easily and move on about your day. So let me know if you want them to be longer, if they're perfect the length they are. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Have a good one.